in the waters of baptism, Geraldine died with Christ and rose with him in new life. May she now share with them the eternal glory. today is offered as a requiem mass for the repose of the soul of Geraldine Eustace, our condolences to her husband Jerry, her children Leanne and Christopher, her son-in-law Anthony, daughter-in-law Siobhan, her grandchildren Molly, Darcy, Charlie and Bonnie May, her mam Nella, her sisters, Linda, Anne, and Margaret. Her brother, Michal. Brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, nephews, nieces, extended family and friends. And we also remember at our mass today, her father, Michael, who already reposes in the Lord. Just before our requiem mass begins, symbols from Geraldine's life will be brought and left upon her coffin. Uh, these number a photograph and her rosary beads. We all know that Geraldine was a woman of tremendous and powerful faith and had tender devotion to our Blessed Mother. How fitting it is today that on the Feast of the Assumption, 
Our Lady been carried home to heaven, that Geraldine too on this day is carried home to her father in paradise. I invite forward those who will leave the rosary beads and the photograph on the coffin. Geraldine cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life, come blessed of my Father. In baptism, Geraldine received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. My sisters and brothers, we believe that all the ties of friendship and family and affection that knit us together during our lives does not unravel with death. Conscious that God always remembers the good that we have done and forgives us our human failings, we call to mind th this afternoon our friend, our family member, Geraldine, that she may gaze eternal upon the face of her Redeemer, her Creator, and her sanctifier. Let us pray. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who opens your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant, Geraldine, whom you have called out of this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace and count her among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our readings, and I invite forward those who will lead us in our first and second reading. Fourth reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like an annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, the hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affection, great will their blessing be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I Makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. I will trust in you. He 
guides my way in righteousness. He anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delights. I will try. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. When the parents brought in the child to Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law. He took him up in his arms, blessed God, and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a life for the revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. 
Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword that will pierce through your own soul also, so that, that the thoughts of many may, hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phinuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to him for all who were waiting for redemption of Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's gospel, Jesus is only a baby who to everybody else looks very much the insignificant son of poverty, just another infant brought to the temple by people of little consequence, his mother and a carpenter on the ritual day of purification. However, this same baby is instantly recognized by two prophets, one a man, the other a woman. Simeon the priest announces that the great wait of centuries is finally over, the Messiah has arrived. Anna, in her 80s, rushes about full of excitement, telling anyone who will listen of the great event which has taken a place that the child is more than he appears and is in fact the son of God, brought to be consecrated to God just like everybody else's big brother had been, but in this case to become instead the first son of all mankind. the closest I could physically get to squeezing baby Jesus, Mary, Joseph and the crib into a mass in August. <laughs> in homage of Geraldine's great love of Christmas. She once said that in her will Leanne and Chris should expect either the house or the Christmas decorations, because they probably cost about the same. She had no less than seven Christmas trees. She had Santis performing all kinds of extraordinary, wonderful feats, and even considered putting up a Christmas tree during the COVID-19 lockdown to cheer up the atmosphere, and she'd probably have been right. At the wake in her home, Jerry, Leanne and Chris spoke to me of Geraldine, the beloved wife to Jerry, who in 1981 stood with him in this church in front of the altar where she is now, and before her family and friends and God Almighty promised to take each other, to have and to hold, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, all the days of their lives. They spoke to me of Geraldine, the mother who had advice for all important things in life the driver of Mam's taxi to Irish dancing or football matches, the woman with an encyclopedic memory for names and dates 
anniversaries and birthdays, and where and when she had heard the news. Geraldine was also the proud granny to Molly, Darcy, Charlie and Bonnie May, and delighted in looking after her grandchildren. You could say that she packed an entire lifetime of love into seven and a half years with them. She was also a bolf, and as such, a force to be reckoned with. At one of Chris's football matches some years ago, the teams were split, and a young man named Robbie thought himself very brave. While Geraldine was speaking to him, he thought it opportune to be cheeky back. So she grabbed her umbrella and took off after him across the pitch, and to this day he's never forgotten it. She had a keen eye for detail, and knew of a subtle way of buying things she thought might look nice in your house. For Leanne and Anthony's ninth anniversary a week ago, she bought flowers for them to plant in a particular part of the garden. And they were planted there the day that she died. Generous to a fault, she would give you whatever she had if she thought you might need it. And if she said she would say a prayer for you, she would even send you a copy of the prayer which she had prayed. Sociable and gregarious, she loved a party and was never happier than playing hostess. Her surprise 50th was the only party she'd never organized. And I've been reliably informed that her acting surprised routine at the beginning could have won her an Oscar. <laughs> Geraldine was a child of God. Her faith was that inner strength and inner peace which the world does not understand. She spent many happy days in pilgrimage to Medjugorje, in that rocky oasis of the Queen of Peace with her rosary in hand. The great comfort that she treasured in her heart from her faith was not something she would ever try to force upon anyone. Instead, she was the encouraging grandmother who made sure that Molly and Darcy could say they're our father on their own by the time they were only three. Molly often quotes her granny at school, patience is a virtue, have it if you can, seldom in a woman and never in a man. And she was always on hand to babysit. Her thoughtfulness extended to gifts and presents. When someone's birthday was coming up, she would often carry a spare gift in her bag, just in case anyone might have forgotten a needed one fast. Ever organized, she's already given Linda her present this year for her birthday in September. Her crochet work is famous in our family. Even as far as San Francisco, every newborn baby to the family and to friends of the family and beyond was gifted with exquisitely intricate crocheted cardigans, christening robes, blankets, she even crocheted her own crib. And my own nieces, Leah and Shun, were no exception. Caring and compassionate, she was always there for Nella, for Uncle Paddy, and 
Jared's mother, Kathleen. Geraldine was in her own way a prophet for a world that remains unseen. All people of faith spend their lives, in a sense, pointing towards a reality that is much bigger than themselves. And some do it less well than others. But Geraldine pointed with humility and simplicity in that most authentic and attractive of ways. Her sincerity was truly genuine. If the presentation in the temple had taken place in Drogheda, Geraldine would have been there, no doubt, organizing a great reception and party in her house after the ceremony, with an extra gift in her bag just in case Simeon or Anna forgot to bring one. And she would have made sure from that day on that the Christ child would no longer sleep swaddled in simple linen Bethlehem bands, but instead in an exquisite blanket of handcrafted crochet, her gift to the Son of God, as it was her gift to all the other babies in her family. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite forward those who will lead us in our prayers of the faithful. Lord, you raise the dead to life. We ask you to give our sister Geraldine the fullness of eternal life. Lord, hear us. We pray for Ian, Gronya, and the medical team for their care of Geraldine over the last few weeks. Lord, hear us. We remember all who are in need and we pray especially for those who are ill. May the Lord grant them healing and strength. Lord, hear us. For all of our loved ones who have died, and especially her dad, Michael, mother and father-in-law, Kathleen and Rory Eustace, and her nieces, Alison and Keedy, Lord, grant all of them the fullness of new life and happiness in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. And today on the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother into Heaven, we pray that our Mother in Heaven has enfolded Geraldine in her Asia mantle as we pray to Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ave Maria. Maria, 
Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Geraldine, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we all might escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Sancto, Sancto, Sancto Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelia Terra Gloria, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei He is Lord He is Lord He is risen from the dead and He is Lord Every knee shall bow Every As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Dennis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Geraldine, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united to your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Mundi, dona nobis pacha. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the <coughs> supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. <coughs> Shadows near, and all this morning, bright though it be, I feel those shadows near me. But you are always close to. Following all my ways, may I be always close to you. Following all your ways, Lord, I watch the sunlight. Warming the earth below And at the midday Life seems to say I feel your brightness near me For you Close to you, 
moonlight guarding the night, waiting till morning comes. The air is silent, earth is at rest, only your peace is near. Yes, you are always close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you, following Following all your ways, Lord. <clears throat>determined lady who gave endlessly expecting nothing in return. She had immense energy and drive which she shared willingly with her family and friends. Geraldine didn't know how to say no. It wasn't in her nature, a trait she inherited from her father Michael. Whenever you needed help, support or guidance, Geraldine was always there to lend a hand. She was devoted to her grandchildren and cherished the relationship she had built with each of them. She spent countless hours teaching them to sing, pray and most importantly play. The rules in Granny's house were, you can do anything you like providing it wasn't bold or dangerous and the children loved the forest. Over the last couple of days we got to see the extent of our vast network of friends and acquaintances. It was astonishing. How could any one person know that number of people? If you were going shopping or, or into town with Geraldine, you would need to bring a flask and sandwiches. 
The, ori the original mission would only take an hour. The remaining four to five hours would be spent trying to get her to stop engaging with the people she knew. She knew everybody by name and everybody knew her. She knew everybody's dates of births, anniversaries and special occasions and never forgot any of them. If you wanted to know when something happened a long time ago, the date, the time and year would just roll off Geraldine's tongue. Geraldine's great passion was knitting and crocheting and she made beautiful jumpers, cardigans and blankets for everybody. I don't think there is a family member that hasn't got something Geraldine made in the home. The woman's ta talents were endless and everything she turned her hand to was flawless. I could talk about Geraldine for hours and will do long into the future. She was a force to be reckoned with, with a heart of gold. Whilst we, we didn't always see eye to eye, she and I were the best of friends and, past, and her passing has left a huge sadness in my heart. She, she will never be forgotten as a memory will live on in our grandchildren who learn so much from their granny and constantly recite sayings and nuggets of wisdom that could only come from her. One in a million who gave it all and asked little in return, that was Geraldine Eustace, better known as Geraldine Balfe. She placed her trust in God and I trust him to look after her now. Thank you. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, <coughs> mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Geraldine may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, <coughs> let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. <clears throat> soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God come to her aid. 
Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Amen. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Geraldine, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help those of us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. <clears throat> in peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. <clears throat> Everybody needs a little hand sometimes. No one stands alone. Makes no difference if you're just a child like me or a king upon a throne. Oh, there are no exceptions. We all stand in the line Everybody needs a friend Let me tell you of mine He's my forever friend My living ever friend Darkest night to rainbows end. He's my forever friend. Even when I turn away, he cares for me. His love no one can shake. Even as I walk away, he's by. With every breath I take And sometimes I forget him My halo fails to shine Sometimes I'm not his friend But he is always mine My forever friend, my leave me never friend. From darkest night to rainbow's end, he's my forever friend. If you still don't know the one I'm talking of I think it's time you knew Long ago and far away upon a cross My friend died for you So if you'd like to meet him and don't know what to do Ask my friend into your heart He'll be your friend too He's my forever friend My leave me never friend Darkest night to rainbow's end He's my forever friend He's 
my forever friend.